Well, Eddie, Eddie holds up to three fingers on one of his hands. Old Ganesh Baba surrenders, recognizes Eddie with his profoundest blessing. Look, I've heard so much about you, about the good things you do. Whatever you're doing is fine. Just be as you are, yeah. Powerful meeting between powerful men. Uh, Ganesh Baba may have uh, jolted Eddie, even if he wasn't aware of it, with Shaktipad. This means like a girl can flick some... Uh, cosmic energy and insight into a person that will literally knock them down. Uh, Muktananda did that all the time in his ashram in Oakland, California. Yeah, Shaktipad, powerful. Um, because just shortly after this encounter, Eddie has the most mystical experience of his lifetime. Remember, this is Eddie the skeptic, huh? as existentialist, isolated, every man for himself. Sart, no, okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to quote Eddie here because uh, Eddie never stops talking about this for the rest of his life in every video interview, in every written interview. And so I'm going to, uh, I've saved the actual writing of Eddie himself. And here's what, how he describes this most profound mystical experience. I'm sitting on my bed. I move my arms and upper torso uh, to the Indian classical music on the radio, you know, which I do all the time. Uh, from a joining room, I, I hear the moans of a female having an orgasm. Uh, well, quite a number of freaks moved out of the dormitory because they realized that it was a brothel and a crash pad both. Yeah. <laughs> what would they think of me if they knew of my life with Gwen in the 50s? They would probably not believe them if I told them that. Okay. What's this? My arms are moving with incredible speed. Wow. With hardly any effort from myself. I, I look down at them with amazement as they fly before me. I have never experienced this powerful energy. Uh, my eyes shut. Uh, a vision of, a, of my spine weaving to the music uh, like a snake uh, within me, uh, appears within me. Upward rush of energy makes my head seem like it's a tower. Uh, capable of receiving and sending messages, my own head. And I see, I see freaks stoned out in the chai shops all around Kathmandu from this tower of perception in my own head. That's when a large sun appears before me in my room. Mm -hmm. Very bright. But, but it doesn't hurt my eyes uh, to look at it. In fact, uh, it's impossible not to look at it. Mm. Uh, I shut my eyes. And, and the sun, unchanged, shines within me. The sun is power. Sheer power. Yeah. Uh, it must be the core of all life. Uh, all living things must spring from this source, sun. Uh, and it's in me. It must be in everyone. The, the sun is drawing me into itself. An invisible cord attached to my body just below my right rib is pulling me into the source. If I allow myself to be drawn into the sun, its great power will disintegrate me. Yeah, surely burn out my brain, destroy my body. This is a moment of true reckoning. <laughs> yeah, moment of truth. Uh, there's only the sun and me. And it's impossible for me to lie to myself uh, that I'm not afraid of dying. 
and I'm not afraid of becoming insane. Uh, uh, well, no, I am not ready to die. I have things I wish to do in my life. I pull back from the sun. And it vanishes. Yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, after this stunning, mystical, direct experience, uh, Eddie feels unburdened. Uh, now I know I am not enlightened. <laughs> uh, that's a relief. Yeah. Some people had me half believing that I was, and now Eddie becomes intensely drawn to spiritual books, Eastern spiritual books. So he leaves through all the books left behind by travelers in the dormitory. Uh, I mean, he's deeply tossed, and his mind gets blown to smithereens by the secret oral teachings of Tibetan Buddhism by Alexandria David Neal. In this occult book, uh, and he's struck by the phrase kundalini serpent power. Well, that's because during his mystical experience, uh, uh, he visualized his spine writhing like a serpent. The way Eddie looks at this book, uh, there's two teachings in Buddhism, uh, an esoteric teaching uh, for the masses uh, with belief in rebirth and all that, and uh, an esoteric teaching uh, without a belief in rebirth. What else? Well, in a dormitory, he studies the esoteric Indian masterpiece, the Yoga Sutras of Pantan uh, Jali, written in 400 in the Common Era. And from this work, he distinguishes two paths in Buddhism, the path of yoga and the path of Samkhya. And he summarizes his feelings. Look, yoga is the way of doing, reading the sacred books, meditating, performing puja, following guru, and so on. And um, samkhya is the way of not doing, not reading the sacred books, not meditating, not doing puja, not looking for a guru in the first place, and not seeking enlightenment. Because enlightenment can only come to you. You cannot go to enlightenment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Eddie gratefully transcends his native Western civilization as his spirit attunes to the profound Eastern insights. Seems I've been one of those shumpka cats all my life, but I just never knew it, he sighs, deeply calmed within himself. Uh, so from here on, he is free and relaxed to enjoy a life that is nothing special. Mm.